Okay, boys and girls, today we are going to be talking about the convex grind and trying to understand what this grind is good for, what, what I like about it, what I dislike about it, and ultimately talking about a revision or a knife that is a convex grind that I think gets this grind very right. So first off, I am no expert when it comes to knives or knife uh, kind of geometry, if you will, but I do have a lot of knives and I do use a lot of knives very frequently. So I know a thing or two because I've seen a thing or two. So that is where a lot of my experience is coming with or coming from regarding convex grinds. And obviously all three of these knives before you are convex grinds. These are not the only convex ground blades I've had. And one of my favorite knives, the BRK Bushcrafter, is a convex Scandinavian grind. So I know a little bit about this kind of geometry and this edge, and so I wanted to take some time to talk about the convex grind because it is still a pretty untraditional grind or unusual, and it does have some pros and it also has some cons. So especially if you are a Bushcrafter, I think that this is a steel that, uh, or a grind that you want to be on the lookout for because it will either really work for you or it really won't work for you. So that kind of introduction out of the way, let's talk about the convex grind as a whole. So these are several examples of a convex grind. These two are going to be the primary reference points for a traditional or standard convex grind. And this one is going to be a modified convex grind. So essentially when it comes to a basic traditional convex grind, essentially what a convex grind is, is a grind that either starts from the very top of the tang or sometimes not quite the top of the tang, but essentially is one single grind similar to a Scandinavian grind that goes to the very cutting edge. So there is no bevel, there is no secondary grind as you guys can hopefully see here. I know that this uh, laminated steel makes this a little bit more challenging on the Falcon even, because you do see that there is a bit of a separation, but that is not an additional grind, that is just the layered laminate steel. But that is essentially same over here, there is no micro bevel, there is no secondary grind to this edge. It is one single grind down to the edge. And essentially what that edge looks like, you know, you might be used to a traditional edge being very, uh, you know, straight. A convex grind essentially looks something like this. It's obviously exaggerated, but essentially a convex grind has this medium point around here, and it's a lot easier to feel than it is to show on a video that it comes down, kind of slopes down and then to a very cutting edge. Now, why you would want a convex grind in the first place is that it is a very strong grind. Um, and one of the biggest advantages to it is it allows you to have a very thin edge with a very strong kind of uh, back to it, if you will. So the actual cutting edge on the convex grinds will be very, very thin. Thin, but they are still robust because the primary taper in the edge or the very primary reduction to steel is right towards the very end point, so the very cutting edge, and not too far back, right around here, is a very thick, very heavy amount of steel. So when you are doing things like, let's say, batoning, a convex grind is going to work very well because you have a lot of steel behind that edge and it's going to bust out the wood, it's going to split the wood well, and it's also going to provide a good amount of durability. In addition to this, other ways that the convex grind are useful or the ways that they shine is in things like game processing, natural material processing, because you have a very thin cutting edge and usually a very shallow bevel or not quite bevel, but degree angle on that edge, you're going to be able to slice through things very well. So there's not going to be as much resistance when you're trying to slice things. Now, one of the biggest problems that convex grinds have is due to how chunky that steel is, not too far away from the cutting edge. This uh, impacts things such as carving and things such as feather sticking. And if you ever try to feather stick with a convex grind, you'll know that it is not impossible, 
but it certainly does take a special technique and a little bit of practice to get good feather sticking with convex grinds. And once again, that's primarily because your cutting edge and that thick part of steel or the thicker part of the steel is, you know, sitting right around here. So the nice thing actually about this falcon even is it kind of shows with that layer laminate where the edge starts to drop and drastically taper inward. So when you have a knife like this and you're trying to feather stick like such, if the video will focus, what ends up happening is you hit a lot of resistance on that thicker part of steel, thicker part of the steel, so that means that you have to hold the edge at a greater angle, like such, and when you hold the edge at that greater angle, of course, the blade wants to dig into the wood deeper, so it's a little bit challenging and it's a little bit hard. In addition, once again, when you're trying to do things like carving, unlike when you're processing game animals where, you know, when you cut into flesh and you part it, uh, that essentially that meat or that skin is being parted away from the blade. So having a thicker um, steel behind the edge isn't as big of a deal. When you're carving wood, it doesn't quite work the same way. So when you're pressing down into wood, that wood doesn't just part away or just separate easily like skin or like meat would. Um, so what ends up happening is you have to put a lot more force down because you're fighting the resistance of that steel that is not too far away from the cutting edge. So those are some of the problems with a convex grind and it isn't just me that will point this out. If you talk to anyone that has used convex ground blades, they basically all have the same exact thing to say about them. Now, as far as it goes, obviously here's three convex grind blades. So I'm not the largest uh, fan of them, but I'm also not uh, someone who is vehemently opposed to them. I can work with them. They're definitely not my number one choice, but they're also not the worst. However, recently I did come across and get this JBK Layman, and this is actually part of the reason why I wanted to make this video to begin with, and that is because I have used convex ground blades for quite some time, and I was never quite super sold on them in traditional senses of them, uh, of in traditional senses of the convex grind, but I actually got this JBK Layman, and this JBK Layman has a modified convex grind, and essentially it is a true convex grind, you know, coming down from the spine to the edge is a true convex, but what JBK did was they added a pretty good sized bevel, actually, this is certainly a no micro bevel, and you guys can pretty clearly see by the shimmer or the shine or glint of that bevel that it exists. And what I have found in practice when it comes to having a bevel on a convex grind or a pretty noticeable bevel is that it alleviates, especially when it comes to uh, feather sticking, it alleviates a lot of the issues. And that's because when you add that bevel, you're adding a secondary degree uh, to that actual edge. So with these, you know, you are left with whatever degree that edge was taken down to when they convex ground it. And usually that's a pretty thin, pretty shallow uh, degree, which makes it once again great for slicing, but not so great for doing things like feather sticking. And especially because you're trying to fight that thicker middle portion of the grind. But when you have a bevel like this, essentially what that bevel allows you to do, or essentially what it gives the blade, is a different degree for what that edge will cut. So now instead of trying to just barely pick up you know, a piece or a very small portion of the wood when feather sticking, you know, at a very shallow angle and running into that grind. What it allows you to do is now the blade is ground at a slightly higher angle and that slightly higher angle now gets that cutting edge off of that kind of thicker portion of the convex grind. And so once again, it's a little bit hard to explain in words, but when you do really use a convex grind with a bevel, it makes a world of difference and honestly it makes the convex grind much more usable and I'm beginning to like convex grinds a little bit more now because of this blade because it actually is like wow okay I can really do those few things that the convex grind really suffered at.
And even when it comes back to notching, because of that bevel, because it adds a little bit more consistency to the degree and angle at which you place that blade, it allows you to do a little bit better at notching. Now, notching still isn't great because you are still dealing with a degree of thicker steel, you know, right towards the middle of this edge or even a little bit further on. So you still have to push past it, but it's not too bad. And honestly, really fixing the biggest problem with me or the biggest dislike I had for convex grinds was their hard learning curve to reliably and repeatably feather stick well. Um, that was something that a lot of convex grind knives just don't do very well. And lastly, before we fully end the video, the last part that I do want to talk about as a con for convex grinds is the tip strength. Now, whether it's a modified grind or an unmodified grind, tip strength is something that you want to keep in mind with any convex grind. Now, this one's probably actually one of the better. Actually, these two smaller convex ground blades are a little bit better, but you'll notice when it comes to a convex ground knife, that by and large, even though this is a rather thick stock of steel here, the tip is very tapered and there is absolutely no support. So with a knife that I'd feel more comfortable, you know, prying with a tip, you can see that the tip is a little bit thicker on this one and it has most importantly a swedge, which gives you some end tip strength. So that is not present on a traditional or modified convex grind. And it's most notable in something like this Bark River Knives Aurora, where you have a very, very thin tip that is, like I said, not supported at all. But all of these blades are in the same boat. So one thing that you wanna keep in mind with convex grinds whenever you're going out into the wilderness is keep in mind what you're planning to use those convex grind blades for. Things such as creating even a simple netting needle will not be able to be done with these blades without likely snapping the tip. In fact, I had a earlier Aurora. Uh, it was one of my first bushcrafting knives and I was trying to just make a simple netting needle out of a piece of um, aspen, which is a very soft wood, and I actually ended up snapping the tip down to about there. So these blades, when I say that they do not have, or they have very fragile tips, I do mean that very seriously. Once again, the Falkneven probably is the best of the lot, but I wouldn't even risk it with the Falkneven. I wouldn't uh, put really any type of sideway or lateral type of uh, motion on any of these tips. So anyways, guys, that uh, wraps up that final little bit about convex grinds. As always, God bless and I'm out.